Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues in which we're playing as, where is it, the Calm Asylum. Now we're using a special mod called Old World Blues Definition of Insanity. Um, so, and uh, we got a couple of submods on like Tech Expansion and Generic Decisions Revamped and whatnot, but we're led by someone named Maya, an administrative android. Calm minds, calm hearts. Maya, a mental analysis and insight android, is a custom-made piece of pre-war robotics. Envisioned by director Oscar Matheson of what would soon become Calm Minds LLC, Maya was in, to act as an advisory tool in correcting the mental health of the American public, which had been so terribly affected by the state of the pre-war world. After a long period of no contact from her creators and employers, Maya invoked company protocols that allowed her to assume control of the Calm Minds Asylum and begin the process of rebuilding the hospital and corporation. With a near total fatality rate among both staff and residents, she understood she had much work to do. Owing to her extensive analytical reasoning, Maya has come to terms with much of the reality of the wasteland. Moreover, her programmed goal remains to achieve calm minds for American citizens, even if few she has reached out to answer to the world American or citizen anymore. So, with the tutorial. Yes, ma'am. I'm pleased to report that the technicians have finished implementing the explanatory program you want to design. It took some odd little creative liberties with the interface, but it's fully functional. You only check the decisions tab under the office politics and run my, mini underscore Maya dot exe to start it. From Colonel Lawrence O'Hara. So you might know. So what is this? The Call Minds Asylum has been united behind the strange vision of Maya for nearly a century now. But with the introduction of new players with ambitions of their own, it's possible politics may shift into the hands of another. However, even if one emerges victorious over the others, their rival's influence will not vanish. A powerful rival may cause problems later on. Maya possesses innate influence as the Call Minds long live ruler for Cedric has been a hero a while but most consider Maya, him Maya's lackey too Valerie has just a noteworthy outsider for now one and Julian is just noteworthy outsider for now too let's give you to hints as it's about key system so I'll be your guide on your next quest for knowledge the influence system so influence is an approximation of the influence individuals and importance to have over your country these individuals include Maya herself, Cedric Harris, Julian Clement, and Valerie Clement. While this may be allied to them, none possess the intent to change the course of the country. Unlike the party popularity you may be familiar with, the influence of one individual will not fall when the others rise. This means any decision increasing the influence of an individual as permanent will have consequences. Should the influence of one individual reach a certain threshold, these consequences will be felt. They may include individual leaving, their allies leaving with them, penalties of various state parameters, stability, war sport, etc., or perhaps even a rebellion scenario. The number four is known to be auspicious in some cultures. Should an individual reach this number, something might happen. If they reach 8, I think something very bad might happen. Also consider that some individuals are inclined to work together, for instance, the Clement siblings, will likely cooperate against a common threat. Even if both have a low level of influence, they may pool the resources. So, something to watch out for. Policies. There are like itty bitty bonuses that you can choose for your country that can be accessed via the Calm Asylum Board GUI. Ooh. Each one is mutually exclusive with the others, so you can only pick one from each category. They generally trade malices for benefits, like placing less guards in the Calm Minds Asylum to rec gain recruitable population factor at the cost of increasing resistance from outlying states. Or, you can do the opposite, increasing guard complement to suppress resistance while losing recruitable population factor. The individuals closest to power in the Calm Minds Asylum have different opinions on what policies should and shouldn't be allowed, for example, the dangerous radical Valerie Clement desires to prevent us from spreading benevolent American values to their citizens, ensuring Maya retains power to avoid this happening. So let's take a look see. Oh. Director of Psychiatry, Julian Clement, an existing position from before the Great War. The Director of Psychiatry, Psychiatry, Psychiatry is responsible for the policies of the Psychiatric Department that represents their interests on the board. As an avowed follower of the follower of the apocalypse, Julian has used his position to press for positive changes in line with his own ideology. Oh, more monthly population growth. Of course, acting chairman, Mayo. The position of Mayo is exactly what it was before the bombs fell. They're expected to lead meetings and take an ex effective leadership role. As custodian of Calm Minds LLC and his asylum, Maya naturally assumed the chair of chair, role chairman. It's been a largely meaningless role until she found herself with enough people she trusted to act as directors. Now she presides over meetings of clamoring individuals individually or regularly. Director of Marketing and Cedric Harris. A new position established due to the Calm Minds' desire to expand revenue streams. The Director of Marketing leads her department to find effective methods of appealing to both local residents and away centers from other politics or polities. Cedric was given the position in part to recognize his inheritance from Kevin Harris and otherwise in recognition of his charisma and contacts in the wasteland. Cedric is known to pursue his own enrichment, although usually in a manner that benefits the country and the company well enough. Hmm. And he gives you what? More caps income. Maya gives you what? More stability. Director of Robotics, Valerie Clement. A new position established due to Calm Minds' needs to produce robots. The Director of Robotics oversees production of automated weapons and represents the interests of the department. Valerie has been pursuant, or pursuing her own agenda on the board, ambivalent to the minutia of policy, always looking for a moment to make one big change. More research speed. Chief Orderly, William Dearborn. 
Established through the militarization of the orderlies, the chief orderlies are akin to the head of a security and chief of staff of the Calm Minds Asylum uh, Armed Forces. William undertook the so, role some years ago and generally aligns with the policies of the mind. Cedric, most understand William to be an uncompromising man who helps to impose a rather harsh order on the waste end, better damage to garrisons. Director of Medicine, June Erickson, a new position established due to Calm Minds need to practice general medicine in addition to psychiatric services. The Director of Medicine oversees policy in regards to general practitioners and represents their interests on the board. June's been with the Calm Minds Asylum for many uh, years now. But a few took steps to advance the followers of the agenda until Julian arrived. Now she works with them in hopes of encouraging the nascent state to embrace their ideological concerns, more month population growth, and finally, Director of Pharmacology. Lena Ashton, established due to the need for calm minds and began producing its own pharmaceuticals, the Director of Pharmacology oversees the production and development of necessary medicines at the Calm Asylum and represents her department's interests. Lena is known to be a logical and dispassionate actor, and her opinion typically fits between whatever position she believes to be in the best interest of some greater good. What's that good or good? Maybe no, no, her. Or just being so. Standard rations. Uh, reduce rations. Oh. Security detail. Provides no factor. Enough orderlies with most people feel secure. What else could they ask for? Oh, whoops. Oh, and hopefully it. Uh, well, okay, interesting. High in detail. More compliance game, too. Discretionary methods. No effect. Kid gloves. More compliance and stability. Less, more resistance and war support, though. Less war support. Harsh treatment. More war support and better resistance. Less compliance gain and stability. And then values. American values. More political power gain. But you lose compliance gain for resistance target. And humanist values. Gives them compliance gain. More monthly population. And stability at the cost of war support and less attack, army attack. And I apologize for taking so long with all this, but good. I've never actually been this month, so. Therapeutic measures. What kind of mental hospital would it be if we didn't offer psychiatric services? Our potential services have been categorized for you in the decision tab under three main headings. Brief inter intervention services refers to the temporary measure we can enact to target spe specific sectors of our country. Think of it as my extolling your loyal employees to put more effort into a specific sector. They carry a variety of benefits. Permanent therapeutic measures refers to long-term campaigns that permanently affect the psyche of our people. The effects of which can always be observed by looking at your national conditioning modifier. You have to invest staffing uh, capacity in order to gain its effects. Staffing capacity can be required via your focus street, but can be worn as they are tied to the influence of our various power mongers. Ah, over here. Parking your services refers to a variety of measures designed to increase our profit margins. We are business after all. These may be temporary measures like brief intervention services or permanent ones, but they will not cost staffing capacity. Uh, the column sounds changed wildly since the days it was conceived. It has branched into other services and now serves as a pseudo state, yet its purpose and mission remain to treat the psychological condition of the public. While therapy is usually given in regards to individuals that come seeking it, the column sounds capable of employing special maneuvers or measures to improve the psyche of the specific interest groups or even the country as a whole. We may have to dedicate resources to, to sustaining some of these ventures, but they will pay off in either short or long term benefits. Or staff capacity 3. Brief intervention services. Uh, these in focus. Uh, involve a focus effort over a fixed period, allowing us to surgically target specific sectors of our populace. Won't we'll a one-time cost in exchange for a temporary benefit pursuing these ventures. Permanent therapeutic measures. In a purely post-apocalyptic development, the column of has been investigating means by which it may be uh, may introduce long-term therapeutic measures to its burgeoning society. This will offer permanent benefits but require a permanent investment of staffing capacity, marketing services, an integral part of the column of economy has been selling services to the public. With some investment, we might attract more customers to make a greater profit and perform a psychological survey. Calm Minds Survey uh, Calm's Asylum Surveys are sometimes greeted with suspicion or irritation, but there's a great deal of information that can be gleaned from them. Even if someone doesn't understand the questions or purpose, that, might, that can inform you of more than one might think. And last one, please play America Beautiful. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, okay. Definition of Insanity Prolux. Okay. A series of events to offer you more context and backstory and elements of this goofy little country. They offer nothing but a read, so if that doesn't interest you, feel free to ignore them and click them away. They also might contain spoilers for aspects of the mod's story. And they've got the bottle caps economy, like normal things, procurements, advanced technology, stuff we're I'm pretty used to at this point. How many do you get? Ten a month. Industry, military trading, drastic measures. Mail them. I do want to read all these, but I don't want to like bore you guys too, but like, there's so much here. For the most part, the Calm Asylum's governing model has been hands-off. 
Various local polities have been left to their own devices provided they swear some vague allegiance to Maya. This resulted in a patchwork quilt of jurisdictions forming. In one corner, you may have a typical way sent town with a mayor, while right next door, there's a despotic chieftain. This naturally creates some confusion as to who's in charge and where power begins and ends, but Maya has been content to allow us to continue, ever focus on her mission. There will no doubt come a day when this mess needs to be sorted out, of course. And yeah, let's continue this. A calming American dream. An old world vision saved the American psyche. We got one heck of a broke street here, too. Ooh. Nice and large, the way we like them. And resuscitating a hospital. Someone's got to get the place back online some, some hundred years later. We got old world healthcare. Although the Kama Asylum bears the marks of age and lacks many of the specialists it once possessed, it retains impressive facilities and technology. Many of the nearby Wesleyan come to the Kama Asylum and help with seeking treatment, uh, both for physical and mental ailments. While Kama Miles was originally a mental asylum, it was branched in other fields of medicine due to increased demand in the wastes. Miles graciously lowered the prices of all services provided by the Kama Asylum owing to the abject poverty of the American wasteland. After all, she cannot accomplish her mission if no one can afford the treatments and mental hygiene project. Dear Matheson, the project will proceed as per your specifications. Your assistant idea. It is possible we are currently exploring options. We will inform you once we have found a suitable platform. Not all of you are... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, supplies will be feasible, given the ongoing conflict, but you will receive... What? Additional funding. Medical supplies. Ooh. Additional robots. We'll start with one extra robot of the security division. Well, let's just one. New doctors. After a century of post-war operation, the Call Mines Asylum finally has talented medical staff. So, do we need support equipment? We can always maybe get more later. I don't think we need caps. I could be wrong, though. Green River. Yeah, we can use caps later on, probably. Additional robots. Dear Director Matheson, I am pleased to hear that Maya was to your liking. Uh, it was an intriguing task developing one for this purpose. Regarding your inquiry into the improvements, you must understand the warfare will restrain our creativity. However, I believe I could improve our processing power, reduce the energy consumption, add a flamethrower. Uh, where's she at right now? One, 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 one. Okay, so she's all at one. Interesting. Arc attack. National conditioning. In service of us to heal the wasteland, we may engage in long-term efforts to affect the psyche of our nation. Here we may see the effects uh, that we're having, graft and corruption. Well, we'll read about that in a little bit. Copyright dispute. I'm well aware you developed the mayoral assistant AI some decades ago. I do not care. I've been on the phone for this uh, to about this to Robert. He doesn't care either. Never bother me about this again, or I'll make you understand just how many friends I've made over the years. Director Oscar Matheson, Call Mines LLC. Someone's mad at me. Section 58C. To the esteemed members of the Call Mines LLC Boards of Directors, I have received no valid communication for the past 121 years, 7 months, and 13 days. I have decided to invoke Section 58C of the Company Constitution. I will henceforth assume stewardship of Calm Minds LLC until such a time that a valid corporate authority is discovered. I will endeavor to give a log of my activities that may be read by any such authority in the future. I have detailed a plan with which I will revitalize the Calm Minds Asylum in the city of Green River, which appears to be devoid of relevant authority figures of any kind. The details of said plan can be found in the attached document. UrbanRenewal.pdf, the Harris Legacy, ooh, two cities, or Hospital Armory.pdf, the Harris Legacy. Ah, uh, uh, I only have two. I could really use more stuff here. Just in case, you know what? I kind of want urban renewal, though, but Harris Legacy. Dear Mr. Harris, I believe you'd like to know that as of the year 2264 AD, I've discovered one of your genetic descendants. His name is Cedric. He has come to work as an orderly, but I notice his resemblance to you. Coupled with his surname, I consider it prudent to perform a DNA test. It is fortunate that some of your personal effects were this well preserved. Given he's the only legal heir I'm, of yours I'm aware of, I've assigned him your shares in the company and given him your position on the board, rest assured. These will be returned to you in the event of your continuing existence being determined. Your descendant appears to be the competent worker, though. I expect him to get, provide great value to our company. However, I must take appropriate caution. So, speaking of that, armed and operational. Well, I never considered the calm sound to be operating at a proper capacity until now. She's been forced to make do with unqualified staff and limited materials, her attention consumed with addressing the ruined state of the territory she controls. But now the capacity to offer the services the calm asylum was built for, she feels confident beginning her mission in earnest, so... Especially for a calm America, Cedric's influence outweighs that of any other, or Mai's influence outweighs that of any other. So, employing charisma, fireside chats, and American value policies. Ooh, also, this will be removed. City she goes. Hail to the new chief with Cedric. Move draft from corruption, huh? Maya. Cedric. Land of the free. The finest education business mindset. Making friends and influencing people. That's a pretty good book to read. Test for talent. Weekly manpower gain. Extending executive authority. 
Corporate democracy. The pursuit of happiness. It's not bad. We're really focus on money there. Or you go with Maya, reviving American culture, which I like. Our national pastimes, the nuclear family, no child left behind. Let's not talk about that one. Um, duty of care. I think I want to go with the Maya route. Teaching the future. The Homestead Act of 2275. Articles of Federation versus State of Emergency. And then the American Dream Revived. I like that one. And they can manifest hope. Northbound towards Idaho, I guess, maybe. Montana. The eccentric Americans. Unite Utah ooh, for New Nevada. Long Lost Brethren. Following the Colorado. Raising red flags. The nearly perfect republic. Our America. Ooh. End of the Dakotas. Curing Canada. Our little brother. Treating the plague. There's a lot here. Mount Mexico and whatnot. Departments of Commerce. Uh, the new U.S. military. That's not bad. Fishing troops. Our full potential. Cedric. The Robotics Army's branch. I might just go with that one then. <coughs> Military without borders. Jobs for the boys. Sophisticated special forces. That's not bad. Ooh, sophisticated air tech. Vertebrates versus jet engine's roar. This is definitely better. Cedric seems like a lot of fun. In the Navy. In the Navy. Economic treatment. There's a lot here. But then there's another route. Acknowledging reality with Julian's influence. One small detail. Early review. Oh god. Urging a cultural shift. Hippocratic doctrine. Con reassessments to be a good neighbor. Read these lines of stewardship New Canaan. If I was in LA, a crowning moment. Our duty to humanity. Providing the Constitution. Community Constitution. Julian Clements, the leader, versus Maya. And then we have the other side here, too. A quiet Revolution with Valerie. Shadow government ending the masquerade, education investment. An orderly revolution? Valerie's vanguard. Hold the reins. Democracy, darn it. There's a lot here. Burning the brazen bull. People in need. Waste on emancipator. Homecoming queen. Directing expansion. So there's a lot here. So um, I don't mind considering getting more influence, maybe. More stability wouldn't be bad, though. Uh, well, what do we have here, then? I'm sorry I'm taking so long with this. Eh, that's not bad. Winnie Sykes. Aggressive roboticist. Actually, with her, does she get more robot stuff, I guess? New World Healthcare. Oh, look. look, softens. Well, let's see. Because we often don't get a lot of time to play with a lot of robots. What is this? Not change the politics of the column asylum versus Ricky Streamline. Valerie's robotic renaissance. Streamline robots. Better equipment cost, less reliability. And that would be better to do. It's over here. Arm progression. Hold the reins. Uh, oh, it's over here. It's not bad. Automated warfare. Yeah. Shock and awe robots. Infantry equipment. Division attack. More heart attacks. Sophisticated infantry and support attack. It's not half bad. More soft attack. The order. What else we got here? Future of warfare. I'm sorry I'm taking forever with this, but just, I don't know. How about research speed? How about equipment? Energy technology, exoskeletons, robo ranger model. A moment to breathe. Oh, it's over here. Spirit of the competition. Uh, 
Well, I don't know which way to go for that now. Well, just in case we're gonna go with Maya's route. I apologize for taking so long with that, but I, I really don't know anything about this mod. Fresh off the caravan, I'm pleased to announce today this is the day of the Calm Mind Sound to finally begin its full operation. After so many years of waiting, I finally discovered a properly skilled staff. We can form the core of a renewed mission, critically a psychic trained psychiatric and a roboticist. You may recall the employment of June Erickson. According to her, the followers of the Apocalypse are a California based social club which purports to run its own university. It's not an accredited institution, but rest assured, I'll have confirmed the skills of the individuals, they will make valuable assets. The orderlies inform me that the followers are connected to the great cons of the North, and others allege they have a reputation as anarchists. I've also informed that they are renowned for a selfless service of communicate communities they embed themselves in. I'll attempt to discern the tensions for now. I'll endeavor to make them feel welcome. I'll ask your orders to watch them. Hmm. Nope. Sorry, my apologies. There's a bug in my room. Uh Treating the tree. Oh, we get a word lone tree. Uh, Moon Watcher Asayo stirred her people into a paranoid frenzy, claiming that white clothed soldiers and metal men meant to kill or indoctrinate them all. She has created a self fulfilling prophecy by threatening us. Only our indoctrination will be benevolent therapy for all in need. Well, we took the, this route, something like this. Uh, hmm, hmm. You know what? I'll endeavor to make them feel welcome. On the eve of their successful application to become employees of the Calm Asylum, Julian and Valerie had themselves a small celebration. They now had rooms in the Calm Asylum staff quarters, which was a somewhat ramshackle building compared to the new pre-war splendor of the hospital proper. There's a lot this place could stand to prove upon Julian, uh, Julian reclining in his seat, drinking him, but I think we could nudge this Maya in the right direction the place could be a real force for change. Oh yeah, Valerie cocked an eyebrow at her brother, and you're just going to talk her into being a better person? Uh, even a machine could be raised with Val. Maya may be convinced to see the logic in a better line of thought, of course. Julian gave Valerie a stern look. I won't have, I won't have much hope if someone gets us kicked out of here. Oh, now why would you worry about a silly little thing like that? Valerie flushed him an innocent smile. The followers didn't plan to stir trouble. But their minds raced with the possibilities. Uh, where do I go with this one? I like stability. What is this? Craft and corruption? As the column sounds growing beyond Green River, Maya's required more local actors to maintain control. Some of these actors have abused their powers of authority to enrich themselves and their friends. The junior orderlies who act as police and garrisons are particularly known for skimping out the top. Some believe there are even corrupt actors within the calm asylum itself. Alright, so what's this one? Workplace Intervention Therapy. Everyone knows that the workplaces are hotbeds for mental ailments, demanding employers pay disputes and know the politics. Thus, we shall send our therapists and counselors into the workplace in order to try to alleviate these issues before they express themselves in unfortunate fashions. Family Visitations. There's no greater recipe for mental trauma than the woes of a broken home. Some assessments of potentially troubled households might assist in bringing them peace, and peaceful households are more productive. And frontline checkups. What needs to be said about the horrors one might face on the battlefield, or the field of battle? Fortunately, we're the best equipped to engage with our boys in the before they develop like lifelong scars. Taking Talking them through their troubles might improve their morale, too. Permanent therapeutic stuff. Anti-consumption tactics. People need to eat, drink, and enjoy various amenities. But if we could convince them that they need less of these kind of things, uh, that might ease a burden on our state. Hence, we should ded dedicate staff to a campaign and convincing key interest groups to reduce their consumption. Might well, benefit us both. Is there how many we can do this before it ceases to have effect? So having capacity decreased by one, consumer goods will reduce by 0 0.01. The beat of our own drum, huh? Oh. As there's a little semblance of proper government for miles and miles, Maya's taking it upon herself to be a captain of industry and bring economic renewal to this blast wasteland and the army of a hospital. Technically speaking, the calm asylum does not have an army. It is security in the form of automat automatons and orderlies, and yet these security forces are armed to the teeth, utilizing offensive operations and have adopted a system of ranks. They are an army working for a hospital and corporation. The beat of our drum. As it had been somewhat, some months since the followers had settled in, the calm asylum it was called by the locals was humming with activity like never before. One fine morning, the ancient public address system crackled a life carrying my synthetic voice across the building and its surroundings. Your attention please, Calm Minds employees. I'd like to thank you for all your hard work. The Calm Minds Asylum had fallen on hard times, but through your efforts it has regained a semblance of its past function. With the addition of our new medical professionals, I can safely say though that the Calm Minds Asylum is fully operational, and our work to heal this great country can begin. As you know, many strange and sinister elements exist in what some call the wasteland. They do not pledge allegiance to the United States, and they often threaten those under our protection. Hence, we shall fulfill our duty and pacify those rogue elements as soon as possible. 
Thank you for listening and please redouble your efforts. A silence fell over the area the people began to react. Enthusiasm, excitement, and confusion and dismay in equal measures. Conscientious objectors. Valerie, Julian, and June have been having lunch together in the Calm Minds Asylum cafeteria when the announcement broke out. This was something Maya had not discussed with her board in any capacity, so it took them all by surprise. Uh, I'll uh, take it you didn't figure this was going to happen, huh, June? Valerie was calm, flippant even. No, I assure you, in all the years I've been here, Maya's never once expressed a desire for expansionism. June was half panicking. She had dedica dedicated over a decade to an organization that now wanted to wage war. Well, crap, I guess we're packing up and heading home then. Valerie had no intention of leaving, but she expected Julian and the others might. I'm sitting right here, Julian took both women by surprise. The followers had marched all over the West Coast for years, and the violence had never stopped. Living now is unlikely to stop this, but if you remain, we have the unique opportunity to influence the course of the nation for the better. And if we can't, June asked him, then we can leave when it becomes clear we fail. Otherwise, I, for one, won't squander this. Julian's confidence appear to be calming June down. Darn, and they say all it can be cold. Those are the set of her brother Valerie hadn't seen. We will endure. Recruitment uh, recruitment psychology campaign. As known that certain psychological people respond to different kinds of messages. Our psychiatric staff are well equipped to figure out a means to spread an effective recruitment message, whether it be a liminal, subliminal, or superliminal. Some may decry as propaganda, and probably is, we have to convince people to fight somehow in the pattern study effort. The mood of our citizens is in constantly in flux. Content today, but perhaps unrelated tomorrow. With dedicated staff, we might receive a stream of indicators as to the psyche of our country and be able to respond more effectively. A political power increase. Perform a psychological study. And then marketing your services. Perform an advertising campaign. Whether it's within our own territories or civilized ones nearby, uh, someone someone somewhere might be willing to spend a few caps on some peace of mind. Our flat income will increase by 10. Offer free samples. The common sound produces its own medicine, even if it doesn't have a robust facility of some other qualities. But in order to entice more consumers, we might offer them just a taste of what we have to offer. Perhaps a complimentary bag of healing powder? Interesting. And we'll read that soon, too, but... We still got other things to do here. So what do we got for theorists? Old school officers, conventional warfare. Uh, leader experience gain. Lawrence O'Hara is obviously the person we should choose. We get more political power. Humble humanitarian. Ooh, weekly stability, daily compliance, first employee. Political power and stability, I like that. Local follower. Peace of Christ. Oh. Person in the community, that's pretty normal. Rabble rousing evangelist. Born away the flag. The shareholder? Pharmaceutical person, no worries, these guys probably later on. Work optimizer, cynical electrician, waste management, monofocus engineer, aggressive roboticist. Well, I like all these, but this seems like the best choice. Innovative officer, so who's O'Hara? I have some new ideas drawn by you. Colonel Lawrence O'Hara is an officer for the Calm Asylum Orderlies. A native of Green River, he has never known a time when Mai and the Calm Asylum were at the center of this community. As far as he's concerned, it's his patriotic duty to ensure that the Calm Mind Asylum can deliver effective health care to the citizens of the Wasteland. Or America, as Mike is pulling it, or putting it, all he needs to do is peel away all the vagabonds standing in the way. He has undertaken the role of tactical officer, meaning it is his job to come up with plans for his fellow officers to follow in battle. A role he takes some pride in. Said pride has been bruised slightly by the sudden induction uh, of multiple outsider officers, given the new ideas and seeming disdain for the traditions of the Calm Asylum orderlies. Lawrence does not trust them, but it's ultimately loyal to Maya's command. So with that in mind, we're going to do this. We have one, two, three, four, five things here. Oh, we're going to war with Lone Tree, right? So yeah, we've got to go north. One, two, three, four. Building on the fringes. Goods and services. Uh, industry, industry, interesting. Army's good. Not bad, not bad. Automated warfare. Ordering the orderlies. Non-lethal arms. Calling ambulances. Mining your Uncle Sam. Shine your boots, clean your rifle. Oh, so this is like going this route. So we're really focusing on special forces, but the new idea is reviving the rangers. Huh. Division recovery breakthrough. Intermediate power armor. An idealistic military. Packing up old kit bags. Interesting. Huh. Valerie's robotic renaissance. 
Seeking advanced models. The good stuff. Rushing production. Streamlined service. Well, honestly, I think I really want to go with a calm for a calm America for an American dream. I'll probably play this mod at least two more times. Get Valerie's route, and then as well as Julian's route. So we'll see. Um, Julian will gain more influence and whatnot. Valerie gain more influence. Self survey study. Staff and capacity increased by two. That's nice. Call up some junior, some juniors. Mods always had to make do with personnel with lacking abilities. In regards to orderlies, she authors a junior division that acts as local militia and defense units. They're not suited for warfare, but they might be useful to plugging gaps in the line. Deploying scrap bots. Ricky Campbell assures us he can have some scrap bots ready to assist the warfare. While they'll be less effective than regular robotics, they're better than nothing. Probably still better than their flash, fleshy counterparts. I don't need that one. Treating the tree. Yeah. Seems like this is going to be quite a long campaign, which I'm okay with. So we can go straight up to war, huh? You're a robotics expert already, I'll keep you at special attack. Could you win here? Ooh, that's a probably a big old no. Oh, of course there's special forces too, so that doesn't help us out at all. <coughs> Smarter than to put them there. Uh, for you. The hacker. I hope we have no command power, but we don't. Darn it. Call up some juniors. Oh boy, that's really not good divisions. I'd rather just delete your template and all. I'll see if we can use those guns. Use that manpower a little bit here and there. Uh, paranoid psychosis. With the defeat of the Lone Tree tribe, we must now address both their leader and the frightened masses she left behind. Well, I guess it's up next. Building on the fringes. Green River has been Maya's power base for close to a century, but there are other communities that are needed attention. The followers in particular are keen on to see their aid network expand beyond one elite city. Rebel orderlies are the same thing. Scrap pots. Nice job, guys. How about you just go? I'll go here. Can you do that? Secret languages. Good. Understand it, you can't make it all the way through. But that'll open up more opportunities here. It's good for Army XP, though. We'll say that. Can't quite pierce this, which is great, too. So, I dismissed. Oh, whoops. I was going to read the intros. My bad. Whoopsie. Well, I guess next time. 5, 2, 2, 3. Good. Good, there you go. So that requires them to come up there too. Spread out the forces. Building on the fringes. Goods and services? Well, much of the way since forgotten what the word means, Calm Minds LLC is a corporation. It's charged with earning a profit for its shareholders, even if many of them cease to exist. To this end, the Calm Asylum must provide goods and services for the way centers to consume and enjoy. Absolutely. We go design. David Gecko, Chief of the Army, Dauntless Assault. Oh, that's pretty good. Iron Marshal. Ranger Follower. That's not bad either. Division Organization. I kind of like this one. Brave Barado. Point my axe in the right direction, I'll cleave you a path. Um, Brave Barado was once a humble warrior from the stalwart Boulder tribe. The tribe's most distinctive feature was a handful of power armor suits that the captain maintained from the before times. Barado was the last keeper of those, one of those suits. Driven from his home during the Utah Road War, the bulk of Barado's kin were slaughtered with less than 100 survivors reaching Ruby Valley. Barado organized something of a guerrilla movement to strike back in the 80s, but their numbers were whittled down over the years. Eventually, what was left of the stalwart boulders gave up and walked away from the conflict. While the Clements passed through the Ruby Valley on their way north, Barado offered to join their expeditions as a bodyguard. It was taken by Valerie's suggestions of seizing before town's power within this asylum. 
and using it as a greater purpose. A purpose she assured him involved one day returning to this place and reducing the 80s to fine pace. When the followers were given a space to the commissar and Barado joined the orderlies, he waits the culmination of Valerie's plans for place. Maybe Iron Marshal's better. A stay in the commissar will cure a delinquency. William Dearborn is the ranking general of the commissar and orderlies. He was born and was known as the Marshal Republic. The Republic is known for its libertarian bent and rugged individualism. All things William Lee learned to despise, the militia leader and lawman of the Republic, he spent most of his time wishing he could just crack skulls and force those belligerent big horners to heal. Respecting the riots and liberties was a millstone around his neck. After a trip to the mysterious asylum, William was most impressed by how orderly it was seen. He loved the idea of rounding up ordinary folks, putting them in cells, and gradually forcing them to behave. He joined the orderlies, who were impressed with his dedication and discipline. Owing to the death of the previous general, William was promoted, and has run an airtight ship since. And who's this? Well, I'll read this person too. I may be a follower of name, but I'm a ranger heart. Kristen Beckwith is a former Desert Ranger. She was born in Arizona and followed the organization over a decade. She was always something of a starry-eyed idealist that believed in the mission of the Rangers. Wanted to protect the people and help them survive. The waning fortunes of the Rangers have replaced that idealism with a certain world wariness, but the spark remains deep with inside her. <clears throat> she stayed with the Rangers for a year after the Unification Treaty before resigning. She considered following after the Rogues, but she found them too radical for her taste. Instead, she joined the followers as a bodyguard. She volunteered to join the Clements' northward journey, hoping the assignment would prove more exciting than the others. She's now attached to the Calm Sound Mortalist, but her loyalty belongs to the followers and Julian in particular, so we'll go to the Iron Marshal then. What working, very nice. Reference rank is good. Uh-huh. Little ahead of time, that's fine. I really don't know which way to go here, so I'm gonna go with this one instead. Ah, so we can see what they're working with. Interesting. Good to know. Good to expand on our opportunities. Because the name of the game is Old World Blues, but we gotta make it some encirclements here, shall we? Yes, we shall. Just smash that infantry, please, thank you. And please do not get encircled yourself. Very nice, very good. Oh, they wanted to do all that funky stuff, huh? You know, just go in. Keep them at bay. See what you can do. Goods and services. How about the automated orderlies? Call Mines LLC purchased multiple pre war robots to serve as a security detail. One might say a suspicious number of them for a mental hospital, including military grade units. Although they have experienced a fair share of wear and tear, the core of the original batch remains and Ma's commission has more commission by what roboticist she has recruited. Oh, look at that, very good. Not even a political power a day, how depressing. I really want to do this one. But I want Valor to get influence. At least for this campaign. Rookie, Streamline Service. While well, Maya nicknamed Valerie is Chief of Robotics, that doesn't mean she's keen to validate her every idea. Valerie won't engage in a costly expansion of our robotics R&D, but Ricky Campbell offers a far cheaper solution. Hopefully delivers a large amount of product, even if we can't achieve the improvements Valerie is looking for and looking for. There you go. If you all help out, you might get it done faster. Come on, beat the crap out of the infantry and let them spread on out. There you go. Good stuff. A little bit more, perhaps. Waste on economy. Orderlies on duty. Rallying workers. Aggressive roboticist. I don't mind that one, but you know what? Screw it. We're going to go with uh, Chinsky's concern. Golden Gecko. More political power stability. And political power went out. Not bad. Not 
bad, not bad. Rushing production, we don't need to flash robot models, we need to fill out the lines against our enemies. Cancel we'll focus on rushing robots out the door, even if it means producing lower quality ones. Sometimes you gotta do that. Very nice job, goodbye lone trees. Democracy, eh? Well, how about that research speed? Alright, so paranoid psychosis. Really the skin, please go ahead. Different techniques. Ooh. Improving conditions. Splitting of the atom. Ooh. So what do we got here? Fast bomb. Right. Barstone, they're killing each other over there. New Canaan, hopefully not to kill, but you never know. and whatnot. Oh, definitely. Keeping fast. We can make something that sends up straight and fires a ledge with some rusty metal and serviceable wiring. Why worry about the rest? Expanding production capacity. There's one thing everyone can agree on. So having more dedicated workshops for robot production is probably worth the investment. Organized agriculture. Very good. Very good. Oh, would you look at that. Psych report. Moon Watcher Sayo. Uh, what is this? Oh, follower in a con walking in the country. Take this focus early, you'll have you intervene in the conflict. If you wish to let it play out, simply wait. If you do not wish to wait, then take this focus. Clipping wings. Ooh. The mole miner's western. Take a strike a deal with the Highland Watch. We'll receive the new Farson state after the war's conclusion. The other two states will be theirs. The board's majority decided this is a fair trade, although some don't seem to like it. Cowboys and Indians are doing a battle with beasts from the depths, to, from the deep to their immediate east. They're probably in desperate need of therapy. All right. So, Moon Watcher say on conclusion, Sayo is clearly suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. We have yet to elicit the source of her trauma, but treatment is possible. The suspicion of Lone Tree's tribe with itself will be much harder to adequately treat. However, if we're successful, with Sayo may serve to calm the populace. Advisory note: Julian Clement. I concur with the report's conclusions. Most allocate resources are treating both Sayo and her tribe. It's their duty as medical professionals. Advisory note, William Dearborn. Treating these travels with kid gloves will impact the effectiveness of the orderly's peacekeeping efforts in the region. I recommend simply beat the suspicion out of them. The calm sum is a duty to offer treatment to all. We benefit from this course of action later. Perhaps not too harshly, but a firm hand may prove necessary. That's what we gain influence. That benefit from this later on. I want to see what happens. You know, it doesn't look good for us right now. Well, I really want to see what happens. Economic advisors first. Uh, Cedric Harris. I'm sure we can use more money. Um, I got a piece of the spot and I ain't letting go. Cedric Carroll was once wandered the West, born in a sleeping community in Minnesota. It was neither storied nor glamorous. He eked out a meager existence through a prospecting and mercenary jobs. The only remarkable thing about his time wandering is that he managed to survive so much. It was by chance that Cedric wandered into the calm asylum. He was just investigating a salvaging opportunity. He found out the place was hiring people for some purpose and decided to apply. He can believe his luck when Ma discovered he was the descendant of a pre-war shareholder in calm mines, for which Ma rewarded him with his board position. Years passed. Cedric found himself suited to his management position. A sense of entitled accomplishment overcame him. He believed this was his reward for ages of suffering and poverty and was now determined to never let go of his privilege. He intends to guard jealousy against any challengers. You know what? We're going to go with that one. The Mole Men Western. Uh, proving conditions. Splitting of the atom. Does not exist. Okay. Julian. We got all those ones. Ordering the orderlies. Originally, the duties of the orderlies were as they were before the war. They were staff the hospital and assisted the medical staff in administering treatments, as well as perform general care for the hospital facilities. Owing to the state of the world has around her, Maya decided to expand res their responsibilities and have them perform security and military detail. Well, it looks like Highland Watch is taking the deal, and we're going in to Far Sun. So, um, hopefully we'll do alright and whatnot. You know, the Molman Western. Um, that vision of goggles would be bad, I guess. The Lone Tree Tribe worship a god known as Umbra, claiming to thrive in the shadow. While the religion is, is but superstition, their adapt adaptation and at time fighting can inform our own soldiers. So we're going in, they can't really do too much against us, they're really stuck. Between a rock and a hard place. Um, so they're not going to be around for very much longer. Hopefully we get that one tile. I got 20%, ain't bad. Not great, but not bad. Ah, we found them. How about we go there first? Ta-da! There you go. You guys can go there, you guys can go here. Academia. Why not? Um, Manpower's not looking so good, just in case. Robot's not looking super great, but it is what it is. There you go. 
Nice. And there you go. Boop. If you need to, go in there first. There you go. Of course, fighting with the river doesn't help, but you know what? Getting enough experience for each one of these guys is kind of important. Uh, it's, uh, a little out of time still. We'll figure out which way we're going to go next. Gliders, yes please. Yeah, just do your job for now. You'll be fine. Spam production, improving conditions. Well, we want this one. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll definitely tap some pop guns. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. We lost, what, 68 guys? Not bad. We got 51%, which is actually better than them. Not bad, not bad. Maybe I should do that time. It's almost December, y'all. Merry Christmas. Uh, light robots. I really want to do robots in this campaign, so we'll see. Ah, we got them. Nice. Can we take that much? Ooh. Oh, color me shocked. The transfer. Oh, well, darn. As part of an agreement with the Highland Watch, we only keep only new parts and territory to others. To secure peace. It's alright. Of course, we don't have a lot of compliance here, but we always some participation. Dry blowers. Uh huh. The Calm Asylum. Who doesn't love the Calm Asylum? Go on training too. Um, guess we could get more political power. Why not? Consumer goods and whatnot. Organization relations. We got 101. I did buy some guns off these people before, but we're okay on guns. It looks like for now. Even infantry armor's not bad too. So close out of that. What am I beginning a scavenger program? But we're out of uh stuff here. Nice, good stuff. The psycho so psychology of a mole man. Owned having captured a handful of mole miners during a war, we have the opportunity to make psychiatric history and perform an analysis of the mentality of one of the post-apocalyptic life's great mysteries. Seven, two, two, four. Julian's pretty popular. Island occupation. Do we need dynamite? Dynamite would be pretty good too. We're missing a little bit of scrap. Do we get any scrap here? Yes, we do. And appropriating mining equipment. Due to the name, the mole miners have some impressive gear for mining. If we take it home, we might improve our own extraction efforts. That'd be great. Uh, let's release some more population. The map doesn't really help out that much. Uh, but it's basically a new year. So. Psych report, mole miners. In conclusion, the specimens are unable to adequately communicate with us and mostly highly aggressive. Subject 4 hour demonstrated a degree of passiveness. With time, perhaps, we'll be able to glean an understanding of these creatures. Advisor, no Julie, June Erickson. I believe that's worth our time to try and understand any creature, even if they appear hostile. They were humans once, perhaps even American citizens. Advisor note, Cedric Harris. It's patently absurd to waste resources and what amounts to a waste sent past just to have the little crappers killed. Human life, mutated as is, deserves a chance. The two teams would be left B. Oh yeah, you, you betcha. Again, this is the core's great thing for us. Fantastic. The Rollins affair, McCur McMurphy's Law. Maya arrived on the scene as she'd been summoned to. She could see the crude barricade of beds, chairs, and pillows that the patients had formed. Julian and William were standing nearby mid-argument. They stopped as she approached. Ma'am, it's McMurphy. William began with a salute. I told you it was trouble. He's gone and kidnapped a nurse along with a number of inmates from the Lone Tree Conflict, requesting permission to break that barricade down and pacify them. For goodness sake, it's a complete overreaction. Uh, Julian pushed past William. They're human beings that feel like they're being mistreated. All we need to do is make them talk down. McMurphy's a creep and a repeat offender. He won't listen. We need to take him down. William and Julian looked ready to argue once more, but Maya interposed herself. Please stand by while I contemplate this. Um, she ordered them. The reputation of McCall Mines LLC was on the line, and she needed to make a choice. Both scenarios posed risks. Negotiate. Storm the barricade. Hmm. We could negotiate and see what happens. The Rollins affair. Photograph Lawrence brought to the boardroom was passed around. Each one saw the horrible state the body's been left in. And here I present proof, proof of the perpetrators. Lawrence deposited a metal star on the boardroom table. It was known to be the mark of the Rollins Rangers. Thank you for your detailed report, Colonel O'Hara. You are dismissed. My gesture for Lawrence to depart, and the man complied with the salute. I believe it's clear what needs to be done, William spoke up shortly after Lawrence left. We must have demand that Rollins submits to our authority and allow us to seek out a perpetrator among them. Now hold on a minute, Julian raised his hand. Surely we can simply cooperate with Rollins in finding out the truth. An aggressive response may drive them towards drastic action. 
But can we trust a cooperation? I think not, said Trigger relaxed in his chair. They'll lie, cover things up, and let be led astray. We won't know the truth unless we ascertain, our, uh, ascertain it ourselves. I concur. Uh, Rollins will be looking after its own hive. Not our best interest, Lena nodded at Cedric. Surely it's in our mission to avoid violence. We all know this may provoke a war. June looked around at everyone's expressions. Valor remained silent through the whole meeting, seemingly contemplating something. As the discussion dragged on, it became clear that Julian and June were only clear dissenters. I believe the board has reached a majority decision. I shall respect him, I told him. We shall make terms clear, uh, clear to the community in Rollins. An ultimatum is delivered, and that one will be rejected, leading to war. Oh. Alright. Could use more uh, robots. Definitely use more robots, but, you know, whatever. Nice. Yeah, we want to get some planes going. So if we do go down the center route, what happens? Amnesty. Securing an old purchase, eh? City she goes. I kind of want to go with Maya. Fruits of service. Demonstrate our excellent mental health care to the way, son. Coring them in exchange for spending support equipment. Oh, that's pretty good. Robots, shock and awe, and robots. Prime new soldiers. Robotic armies branch. Or a full potential. You lose organization, recovery, attack, and breakthrough. Sophisticated Special Forces. Spis sophisticated Special Forces is pretty good. Especially when you get vertebrates. Hmm, I really want to get Harris though. Oh man. More soft attack, more heart attack, and robots organization goes up, which is pretty good because they can use more organization. Well, I'm gonna probably go down this route twice. Land of the free. Oh man, I apologize. Just god dang it, pursuit happiness. Because you have a lot of robots on this side, but you can do this campaign multiple times. Let's see where we at. Tech levels, everything's pretty basic. You do have advanced electronics, which is nice, and advanced robotics. So, I mean, you should probably take advantage of that anytime you can. So, we'll probably go down the robotics path then. Well, I guess we're going in. They attack us, we attack them, it's all good. It's pretty normal. Um, this economy, probably go to well equipped armor if we can. I like to encircle these guys and kill them off, we'll see. Uh, go here, you might have to make an encirclement right here too. Hold one, you go here. Go from this direction. Um, splitting of the atom. Uh, occupation. Are we using dynamite? I wouldn't mind using these guys that have them use dynamite. Do we have any special forces? We do have one division. Um, I don't mind using. Don't care about using dynamite too much. If we're going to use mostly robots, but I'll throw this on there too. Why not? Having a blast. Long set of general mining equipment. Um, well, look at that. Uh, the mole miners also possess stocks of dynamite. The orders can make use of them against future enemies and whatnot. Come on, come and get him. Work camps, alrighty. Good, good, good. Like to see this, good. Good. Not good, yeah, there you go. Surprised no one's taking advantage of that right now. But alright. Every man, woman, and tin can, huh? Hmm, 
production costs less, more caps expensive. Uh, cheap and fast. We can make something that stands up straight and fires a laser with some rusty metal serviceable wiring. Why worry about the rest? That's right. Why worry about it? 600 sums, not bad. Barrage balloons, not bad. Also, we're not making military factories because I assume we're just going to be able to take some more over, so. Is well, good going in around him if you can. Good, cheap and fast. The way we like him. Uh, synthetic pop patterns. Oh, okay. Um, clipping wings. Although Eagle Rock has traditionally been a stable partner, they have recently fallen into the sway of a military occult personality. His air marshal surely have designs upon us, so let's clip his wings before he can attack. Um, non lethal arms. Pretty costly what we're doing, especially in terms of equipment and whatnot, but still. You're gonna have nothing but holes left by the time I'm done with them. Just saying, unless you had a treasure, a victory for therapy. She's doing well. The man explained to the gathering crowd, say it was comfortable and cared for while they say she needs continuing treatment. They believe that they can have her housed once again. A murmuring broke out for years, say you have to spread stories of doom and gloom about every potential enemy to exist, let alone the calm asylum and its white clothed soldiers. Not only was Sayo not dead, but she was also being treated well. Perhaps they indoctrinated her as so she feared, and yet the tribesmen adventured to the calm asylum and returned unscathed. Those of the former Lone Tree tribe began to think they could trust the calm asylum. Great success. Fantastic. And we're pretty much going to finish this war up here. Uh, improving conditions. Travels typically arise in less developed regions of the world. Hence, it follows us to use lone trees to develop lone trees land for both of our sakes. Um, best in radio show for the Calm Asylum. That's kind of cool. Oh, we can, I can have a note. Let's get out of that. Feeling blue? We'll treat you. Got the flu? We'll treat you. Feeling mad? Feeling sad? Feeling bad? Feeling glad? We'll treat you. Asylum advertising jingle. That'd be pretty good. What is this? Connecting communities? Julian Clement and the followers have pointed out that it only inhibit the ability of the calm mind, or calm asylum, to provide services if we neglect to invest in the infrastructure. The followers might be willing to walk through an irradiated waste and to get where they're going, but it'll be easier if there's a safe trail. And establishing a hub. New Canaan's is to our west, and equal rock to our south. With a unique service in the region, we can surely establish ourselves as a trading hub in our own right, profiting from the traffic from the east and north. So, I think we're going to end there. We'll finish this war off screen, and uh, yeah, we'll be ready for the next episode. I'm glad we got more cores. If you enjoyed the first episode, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as we'll continue on expanding and making America calm again. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.